presents Kismet. I was greeted at breakfast by a shriek. My mom's coffee mug shattered on the kitchen tile, and she brandished a cream cheese-covered butter knife at me. Who are you? Your son? I was still half asleep, trying to rub the drowsiness out of my head. Get out of my house, you lunatic! Get out! A bagel bounced off my forehead, and I made a hasty retreat as she rushed me, wildly waving the knife. I was chased out of the house, pelted with bagels and threats of police hauling me away if I came within ten feet of her again. The front door slammed behind me. I stood on the sidewalk in my plaid flannel pajamas, rubbing my cold, bare feet against my ankles. My mom was peering out of the blinds. They say you can never go home again, but this was ridiculous. If she was trying to make a point that I didn't visit enough, she could at least have let me get a coat first. Hello, Mrs. Jones. I waved half-heartedly at the elderly woman walking by with her Pomeranian. She put her head down and sped past me, glancing anxiously back as she reached her front porch and fumbled with her keys. The door slammed behind her. She'd known me my whole life. Either she was in on this too, or something odd was going on. I walked gingerly down the street, wincing at the icy pavement beneath my feet. Four blocks down, the small street met a larger road, and a dingy diner huddled on the corner. I stopped in front of it, rubbing one foot over the other to wipe off the pebbles that had stuck to me. At least it would be warm inside. As I appeared in the doorway, the waitress behind the counter loudly cleared her throat. She was looking pointedly downward, and I followed her gaze to my bare feet. With a sigh, I trudged back outside. I had no keys, no wallet, no shoes, and no idea what was going on. I only knew it was cold. A stack of typo-ridden local newspapers sat in a sad, damp heap in the metal rack outside the door. I folded two of them around my feet, scrunching the paper together to make paper slippers. When I walked back through the door, I was given a disapproving look, but was allowed to enter. The scuffed metal tables were mostly empty but a young woman sat near the window, gazing forlornly out. She was wearing fuchsia pajama pants and paper bags on her feet. She straightened up when she noticed me, watching me sadly as I sat down across from her. No shoes, no service. Where'd you get the bags? The cycle bin. Yeah, good thinking. Coffee's free. Thank God. I flagged down the waitress and watched eagerly as she filled a slightly dirty mug with steaming coffee. She looked at our thin pajamas and paper-wrapped feet, clucked sympathetically, and brought us six packs of crumbling crackers. I peered at myself in the metal napkin dispenser. What are you doing? Making sure I'm still me. Did everybody forget you, too? I took a sip of the scalding, coffee-flavored water and grimaced. I think so. My mom tried to kill me with a bagel. I came downstairs for pancakes and nearly got arrested. It's been a weird morning. We sat in silence as I sipped my coffee and she stared out the window, a blank expression on her face. What's your name? She considered a moment. Better not take the chance. If we don't know each other, we can't forget each other. There's got to be a reason this is happening. Something we did. That, or our families, and my neighbor, all went crazy at the same time. Seems unlikely. She absently tapped her spoon against the handle of her mug. 
But why us? I don't know you. At least, I don't think I do. I drank three more cups of the vile coffee as we tried to figure why. She was in town to visit her parents. I was in town to visit my mom. But she had arrived three days ago, and I arrived yesterday. Her birthday was in the spring, mine in the fall. Nothing added up. I sighed, brushing cracker crumbs off my lap. Maybe it's something that happened yesterday? I haven't gone anywhere or done anything. And now I'm going to spend the rest of my life in a cardboard box wearing Barbie pajamas. I forgot to bring pajamas. These were all I could find and they don't fit anymore. Her face crumpled and she let out a hiccuping sob. I grabbed her hand. At least we have each other. Yeah, great. She wiped her nose on a paper napkin. We can die cold and miserable, together. Just just try to remember. Yesterday, walk me through it. She sighed and buried her fingers in her tangled hair, leaning her elbows on the table. I got up, um, watched a documentary with my dad and fell asleep on the couch, played Scrabble with my mom. Oh, and I ran to the store for milk, and on the way home I bought some flowers. I leaned forward. Flowers? Where? Some man on the corner over there. She pointed out the window. I was bouncing in my seat. What kind of flowers? Purple roses? Her eyes widened. How did you know? I jumped to my feet, instinctively grabbing for my wallet that wasn't there. I bought the same ones for my mom. Let's go. My left shoe blew away, and her bags rustled as she waddled like a snowshoer toward the flower stand. The flower vendor, a big man with a thick mustache, stood next to the stand laden with brightly colored bouquets, all cheerfully blossoming despite the frigid weather. He examined us curiously as we shuffled up. A woman picking through bunches of daisies looked up, started, took her child's hand, and walked around to the other side of the stand away from us. We both bought your purple roses yesterday, I said to the vendor, and now nobody knows who we are. Ah, yes, he nodded knowingly. I did notice two bunches were missing this morning. I didn't think they'd work so quickly, but they are special flowers. The woman in pink pajamas glared at him. How'd you like some special flowers up your... Special how? A customer asked for carnations, and the vendor turned to dig around through the bunches. I've never sold two bunches in one day. It's, uh, uh, what's the word? He waved his hand like he could snatch the elusive word out of thin air. Kismet. It's our fate to die alone in our pajamas? No, no, no. You misunderstand. He handed off the carnations and shoved the cash in his pocket. These flowers brought you together, changed the rules of the universe to help you find each other, to help you find your true love. The woman in pink pajamas and I exchanged a wide-eyed glance before edging away from each other. Her? Him? Her eyebrows raised higher than I felt was necessary. You don't have to look so disgusted. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize this was a serious conversation. Next time a crazy flower vendor erases me from existence and tells me my true love is a man with newspapers on his feet, I'll try to be more cheerful about it. They blew away, so there. You're not the picture of hygiene either. How is this what you're worried about? Shut up! We turned to stare at the flower vendor, mouths still open. You're scaring my customers. Don't you realize how lucky you are? Some people spend their whole lives looking. I want to go home! Clearly, we're miserable. Whatever the flowers intended, it didn't work. So fix it! I can't. He shrugged, leaning back against the stand. The spell stays until the blossoms fade. 
And how long does that take? Eh, five or six days, give or take. But look on the bright side. Now you've got almost a week together. There's nobody else in the world for you but your true love. You're crazy, man. I turned to the woman in pink pajamas beside me. Let's go. She was still glaring at the vendor, and I had to pull her away from the stand and the gawking customers. Don't buy the flowers! The flowers are a lie! She yanked her arm away and stomped down the street, nearly falling as she tripped over the bags on her feet. Her jaw stuck out and her eyes were blazing. I hurried after her. Where are we going? To send those flowers to an early grave. But how are we going to get inside? My mom is going to stab me if I come anywhere near her. She slowed, her forehead wrinkling in thought. There's two of us. She doesn't know who I am. I can lure her outside while you destroy the flowers. It was better than my plan to huddle up in the diner, living off wheat coffee and cracker crumbs until they dragged me away. A bitter wind whistled down the street. I'm so cold. I held out my arm. She huddled against me, clutching my shirt with icy fingers as we shuffled down the street toward my house. I'm holding you purely for survival purposes. Understood. My mom's house was quiet. No accusing eyes glared out of the blinds. I hid behind a tall shrub, out of view, but ready to dart through the door. The woman in pink pajamas tossed her damp paper bags aside and rang the doorbell, gasping as the door opened. Oh, thank God. I can't find Frito. I've been out here for hours. Her face morphed into the picture of wide-eyed innocence, and her lip trembled a little. Please, he's just a little dog. Her performance was impressive. I'd have believed it myself if I hadn't known better. Clearly, my mom was taken in. Ugh, you poor thing. Let me get my coat. They were halfway down the walk when I ran inside and slammed the door behind me, bolting it. My mom beat on it, screaming and cursing with a fervor I had no idea she had. The roses were sitting passively in a glass vase on the table. I grabbed them and frantically looked around the kitchen before throwing them in the microwave and setting it on high. Come on, come on, come on. The petals slowly wilted, shriveling, folding in on themselves until they were dark purple clumps. The banging had stopped. I threw open the front door. My mom stood on the porch, surprise on her face. Evan, I didn't think you were ever going to get out of bed. Oh, uh... I pulled on my winter boots and a coat. Man, I I was just really exhausted. I handed the woman in pink pajamas my slippers and a sweater. Who's your friend? She didn't seem to remember anything. We exchanged a glance, and the woman in pink pajamas sighed resignedly. Elle? My mom eyed Elle's pajamas before looking between us with an increasingly suspicious look on her face. So, uh, we're gonna go. I'll be back in a bit. All right. My mom looked down at her coat, then back at the door. I forgot why I came out here. She disappeared inside. Don't use the microwave. (laughs) She thinks we were. (laughs) Yeah, I know. She had my sweater pulled over her nose like a little turtle in its shell. You could have put some clothes on. Nah, let's get you home. Her eyes crinkled, her smile hidden behind my sweater. We trudged down the street toward her parents' house. What's the plan? There's a window in the back that doesn't lock, but I need a boost to reach it. Then you distract them. We sneaked alongside of the house, 
peeping out of view of the curtain windows and through the back gate. She put her slippered foot in my hands and I hoisted her up to the narrow window, struggling not to drop her as she yanked at it. A little further. I shoved her upward. Oh, shh. She vanished through the window and there was a loud thud. Are you okay? I anxiously tried to pull myself up to see inside. They moved the couch. Ugh. Ow. They might have heard that. I'm going around front. I sprinted to the front and mashed the doorbell. Hello! I extended my hand to the woman who opened the door. I'm Evan. I woke up this morning and decided to introduce myself to the entire neighborhood. It's the neighborly thing to do, and after 26 years of living here, it's about darn time to... Don't you think? Ah, you, sir. I waved over the man walking down the stairs. Hi, hello. Uh, I live a few houses down on the corner, uh, next to the old lady. She, she talks to her plants. I proceeded to ramble through my life story. It didn't matter what I said, as long as I kept them occupied. Oh, I'm, I'm still terrified of zoos. Then, uh, in the sixth grade... I sat on my friend's hamster. Accidentally, of course. He still thinks it was the cat, but... Evan. Elle was standing behind them. Her parents shook the glazed expressions off their faces. There she is. Her dad mussed her hair. Sleeping till noon, like usual. Your pancakes are regular pans by now. <laughs> he wandered off, chuckling at his Awful joke. You two know each other? Evan was just telling us that he, uh... Her mom blinked several times. Oh, is that a new sweater, honey? Her mom bustled to the kitchen to reheat the pancakes, and Elle joined me on the porch, pulling the door shut behind her. All fixed, then? Seems to be. Come on, I'll walk you home. We stood on the curb and waited for a van to lumber by, leaving clouds of exhaust in the wintry air. How much of that did you hear? I didn't hear anything. She was trying, unsuccessfully, to hide her smile behind my sweater. Five houses. That's all that stood between her house and mine. I counted them as we walked past. <laughs> Kismet. True love. She rolled her eyes. I'd be happy if I never saw you again. The feeling's mutual. But when we reached my mom's front porch, we stood and looked out at the bare trees and quiet houses. I shoved my hands in my coat pockets, rocking on the balls of my feet. You, uh, you always lived down the street? Only since high school. Still, it's kind of crazy we've never met. She shifted her weight, rubbing her arms against the cruel wind. She had to be freezing. So, <clears throat> how about dinner? She tugged my sweater up to hide her smile. Yeah, sure. Might as well, since the universe went to all this trouble. And I have to give your slippers back anyway. She shuffled off down the street, tugging at her too tight Barbie pajamas. I'll bring you flowers. <laughs> she flipped me off. I grinned. True love flowers, what a joke. Now I just needed to figure out how to explain a microwave full of wilted roses.
Kismet was written by R. E. Rule. Music and production by Frank Narat. Voice talent in order of appearance was Frank Narat, Gretchen Pilly, Rachel Rule, Matthew Ferrandino, Dutcher Snedeker, and Kristen Newbegin. Thanks for listening, and happy holidays.